We're fortunate to have Yolanda here to talk about her journey to Knotted Locks from Sister Locks. Welcome everyone to Tunisia's Locks Beauty Tips and Potpourri. Today we are talking to the lovely Yolanda Franklin. She is a recent convert over to Knotted Locks. And we're going to have an opportunity to see what she has to say about the ups and downs of her sister lock's journey, what she learned, and some of the reasons why maybe she transitioned over to knotted locks. And then hopefully she'll share with us some of the highlights and experiences with regard to knotted locks. I can't wait. Welcome, Yolanda. It is so just wonderful to finally meet you. Yes. Yes, you too. I've been watching your videos for a while. Really? Yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what, what brings you here today or, or how you even, you know, end up in a space where you'll be talking to us today about transitioning to Naughty Locks. Yeah, well, um, it, it started from childhood, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I never liked the idea of straightening my hair. There was always some resentment. Um, and I was telling um, of Melissa this, um, when I was a child, I remember one day my dad came into the living room and he had just washed his hair. And I said, Daddy, why is your hair wet? And he said, I just washed it. And mm -hmm. I was just looking at him and he was looking at me like, is this child stupid? But what I was thinking is, why do you get to wash your hair and go and I have to go through all of this to prepare my hair to look like something that I'm not. And I was resenting it at that point. I was like, this is not fair. This is not right. I don't like this. And so from that young age, I knew something had to change. And so, um, as you know, and as you've spoken about before, this is deeper than just hair. It's not just about a hairstyle. Yeah, and this ties into um, our femininity, women not being good enough and it, um, always having to change ourselves. And of course, the African-American experience. And it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And it can be painful. And it was, there were some very painful moments um, that were tied back to this. Um, I didn't like all of the, the harshness that we have with our hair. And um, the chemicals in it. And eventually, I came to the point where I realized, and um, my ex-husband was supportive as well. He said, you need to go natural. And so that's when I started um, eventually doing, I was in my 20s, my late 20s. And I, I went natural. And I was natural for probably about, what, 10 years or so. And then I said, you know, I want something different. I didn't know what. I was looking at braids. I was looking at um, crocheted hair. And I was thinking, how long could I keep that in my hair? And eventually <laughs> I realized, sister locks, okay, <laughs> this may be something. Yeah. So yeah, that's how it's it all started. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, so when you, when you spoke about some of the growing resentment about why can't I just do my hair and go like you, what specifically at that time in your life were you feeling or what were you referring to specifically? Um, I did not like, I really resented. Um, I can remember even as a child watching shampoo commercials with the blonde mm -hmm. ladies flipping their hair from side to side. I never saw a representation of my real hair. I knew that my hair would never do that. That's fine for them. Um, be happy with who you are, embrace who you are, but I should be able to do that as well. Um, I didn't like also that as a man, it's acceptable for you to wear your hair the way that it is. But for me, I have to completely change my hair structure. And in the end, it's left damaged and it's left um, lifeless. And it's like being between a rock and a hard place. There's just no, there's nowhere to go. It's, it's, it's a miserable situation to be told, yeah, you are not good enough. And then you need to destroy a part of you to make yourself acceptable. It's, it's unreasonable. It's unthinkable. 
Uh, I love that. I love that yeah. re reference to the difference in standards between men and women. And then also, as you said, why do I have to destroy myself and make myself look different than what I am and who I am authentically in order to be acceptable? That's an yeah. experience that yeah. so many women have, especially people of the African diaspora. You see it all over the globe. You see it all over the continent of Africa. Yes. You'd be shocked, but it's, you know, many people would be, but as you probably know, it's a rampant, you know, issue that people are dealing with, that inability to feel comfortable in their own skin, in their own being. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. It it breaks my heart, you know, even to this day. And like you were saying, Africa, I've seen um, many instances, more instances that I'm comfortable with, with um, the wigs and, and different things. And I, and I'm thinking that you, you have all this, all these resources here, um, all of these people here who know how to work with your hair and have been doing it for centuries. You have beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. want to learn from you. <laughs> so yeah. I, it, it really mm -hmm. does break my heart to see that. Yes, I, I didn't realize that until I, I began to work in the education community with so many of my African brothers and sisters, and they had many of the same complexes that we do in this country. And currently, I believe in countries like Ghana and Nigeria, there are much larger populations of women who embrace wigs and are dealing with you know hair loss at epidemic levels. Uh, than even we are in this in this country here. And I more recently heard a podcast where there was a sister from Africa. I don't know her name, but she said, when you're around the house and you're doing your work, you wear your hair, but when you want to go out and be presentable, you need to put a wig on. And she was on stage and she was talking to a lot of women, encouraging them about how to be more in their femininity, I believe. Yeah, and she said that with no problem at all. It's okay to reject oh, who you yeah. are and embrace something that is less you than anything else. <laughs> oh, that is heartbreaking. Wow. It, is. it is. So so tell me how you actually uh, matriculated through Sister Locks when you found Sister Locks. It was, was it a saving grace like it was to me when you found it? It was, um, but I had, I did have some worries. Um, I actually went through cosmetology when I was younger. I was terrible at it. I, I could not cornrow to save my life. I am terrible at doing hair, but I did understand some of the scientific things and some of the mm -hmm. practical things. I can understand it in theory. And so when I was researching sister locks, and I'm one of those people that researches forever before I make a decision. And one of the things that I was worried about is hair loss because I was thinking I, I didn't see anything online that showed the specifics of how uh, the process was completed. But from what I could see, it appeared that there was a lot of pulling and the structure concerned me as well. And so one of the first locticians that I spoke with, I was asking, um, I said, um, during the consultation, I said, what about um, hair loss? Is that ever an issue for people? And I didn't fully catch it when she said it. She was very, she was pretty strategic. And she said, well, you know, actually, some people get hair growth. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so she was aware, even from that statement, I know that she was aware. She was great. She was great at what she did. You know, I really appreciate her. But but she was definitely aware um, of some of the problems. I was not aware. Um, I decided to go on, go ahead with it because I thought, you know, even if I do see some problems later on, I know that I can always stop doing it. And so um, I went ahead with it and loved it. I loved the ease. I loved, um, I didn't like the grid. I always hated the grid. I, really? I, yeah. Hated that wow. grid. Wow. And that's one of the things that so many people fall in love with is that grid, those all yeah. one part. <laughs> Hated it, hated it. And another thing is because I I knew I knew a lot of knotted locks. I knew that was gonna be um, perfect for me as soon as I heard about it because 
um, the one thing that I did like is once I got to about to those eight weeks, I always said, I wish I could wait just a little bit longer mm -hmm. because I like the fullness that I'm seeing you here. Just like me, I always talk about that. Like my hair just starts to look good the way I like mm -hmm. it at the time getting nearer to the retightening. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have this plucked chicken look that I just can't mm -hmm. take it. The minute it gets full, like it looks now all the time, every day, because of knotted locks, I'm like, oh, I got to go in in a couple of weeks and I'm going to be right back to where I started. Yes, yes. And I feel like I needed to hide my hair a little bit during the first couple of weeks until it grew out some. <laughs> So, so yeah, yeah, that was that. And it was, um, it was the, I, I knew that I, I'm probably at about almost five years now, I think okay. and okay. around, um, the fourth year. So last year I started noticing, I was thinking, is my hair thinning? And I was just looking and I'm like, I don't know. And I denied it and denied it. And I remember one time I had a family member, um, say, oh, somebody must be, you must have a new person doing your hair. Right. And I said, okay, so they're noticing something. They don't know quite what it is. But I said, yeah. it's, I'm starting to lose. And I was still kind of in denial. I ended up going to a new loctician because my, um, my old loctician ended up um, moving. So I went to a new yeah. person and she was wonderful as well. But, um, as she as she continued with her process, I was thinking, this just doesn't look right. And so I went back to my original photo um, that I took when I first got my install. And I looked at my scalp and I said, oh, no, we've got hair loss. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know so, what is so interesting, Yolanda, is when I talk about hair loss, loss on the channel, I talk about initially it's very subtle. And sometimes you can't even really tell. You start mm -hmm. looking and you start saying, well, something's going on. Something's different. My hair looks a little bit thin, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's the retightening. And unless you have a picture or some other objective frame of reference, it's easy to tell yourself, oh, it's not this, it's that, or it's just because I have a retightening and there's a lot of tension or my locks are compressing. So mm -hmm. that's amazing that you were able to pick that up and someone else was able to pick it up. And then you had the due diligence to go back and look at a former picture. And that's when you concluded something was going on. And more importantly, you were at this stage only in it for four years, right? Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. And so I'm glad that I caught it at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm also glad that I kind of had that background with cosmetology and mm -hmm. could see that where this could be leading because I may not have, I may not have known. I may have just continued with sister locks for years to come. And then by the time I realized it might've been too late. Yeah. And irreversible. Yeah. That's right. You yeah. know, it's interesting as I'm listening to you and I'm thinking you are one of those people that I like to see advocate and fully and actively participate in their hair journey. You began to notice something and you began to analytically look at the situation and draw certain conclusions based on your experience, but also your knowledge base and cosmetology to arrive at a conclusion that says, I've got to stop this or I have to intervene and do something about this before it's irreversible or it's too late. When I, when I look at your hair, like if you were um, responding to someone who says, well, maybe you already had issues with your hair going in, or maybe your hair was already thinning. What, what would you say to that, Yolanda? I had, I had the proof. Um, I had the photo of what it looked like before. Not only that, um, I also confirmed with my loctician and I said, look, you can, you can tell the difference here. I knew that my nutrition had not changed. I'm plant-based and mm -hmm. I know that my hair can change um, with nutrition, but this was not that circumstance. I knew that at this time, uh, my nutrition was pretty good. I was mm -hmm. um, taking the vitamins. I was getting the nutrients that I needed. I knew that this was not the problem. Also, 
I knew when I was receiving retightenings from time to time, it was too tight. I knew that it was too tight. I could feel it. And I knew that that was not healthy for my hair. Um, I think that having kind of um, a holistic connection with yourself, um, I wouldn't say necessarily talking to your hair in a way. I don't, I don't know how to phrase that, but, but understanding, just having that understanding that something is off and something is wrong, um, that plays into it as well. But yeah, having that physical proof was enough for me. This, this was not, this was not a situation of, um, me having an ailment or me, um, not eating the proper foods. This was directly related to tension. Yes. You know, I love to hear you uh, present the logic behind how you got where you are, but also talk about the more intuitive right brain aspect that says something's off intuitively. I'm not feeling right about this. I know something is wrong. And that is the part for me that kept urging me forward to say there's something going on. And although I have been able to, on many levels, intervene with my hair care journey over the 13 years that I had the sister locks, I knew it was coming. I knew that if I continued on that path, it was just a matter of time because I was doing so many different things to counteract the stress that I knew my hair was experiencing. When I listened to you, you highlighted some key things that are so important. Number one, because we oftentimes will hear people say, it's your diet, it's what you're eating. And I have responded to that by saying, when you're dealing with someone who already is healthy and is doing fine, you can't blame the hair loss on that. You can't always blame it on menopause. You can't blame it on hormones. But you'll find that when you take the stress off of the hair or you stop participating in whatever the rituals are that are creating the trauma for your hair, the hair, if it's not too late, begins to naturally heal itself and rebound. Mm-hmm. And you spoke yeah. about too, the, 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 from the very beginning, the, the parting kind of struck you sideways as did the tension or the tightness. From the very beginning, you, you weren't really comfortable with that. And when asking your lactician about it, when you go back and she said, well, some people's hair really grows. That was key, wasn't it? That yes. some people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Some people <laughs> just glaze over this. Yeah. So you decided because of that to make the leap. Had you noticed tremendous hair loss? Were you in the beginning stages of it? About where were you when you noticed it, um, Yolanda? Um, you know, um, anytime a woman um, has hair loss, I think that we're going to elevate it <laughs> a little bit higher. But um, <laughs> it, it probably was minimum, um, probably was a minimum amount. I would probably say it, if I had to guess, it probably started it started immediately, no doubt, but I would probably say year two. Now, one of the things that I did notice um, in my third to fourth year is I had a lot of white bulbs um, at one point through my strands. And I was thinking, oh, you did? I I had a lot of them around the front. They were just popping out. I didn't see them back Mm -hmm. here because I wasn't really looking for them back there, but I had a lot of them. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember I looking in the crazy. mirror one day and I was like, oh, this may not that's be That's the root good. ball, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Mm-hmm. Pulled out by the roots. Pulled out by and, the roots. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. oh, it's just shedding, probably, but I wasn't completely comfortable with it. I knew that it shouldn't mm-hmm. be this many. It shouldn't look like this. And yeah. um, since I've started knotted locks, I'm not seeing that. Um, I don't know quite yet. I know that my hair is doing better, um, mm-hmm. but it's so mm-hmm. fresh. Um, this I'm probably into about three months. Okay, and so, so I don't have enough experience to fully um, see growth, but I know that it's better than it was. 
I know for me too, I have been at this in March or April, it will be a year. And one thing I noticed, I think the most profound thing, two of the most profound things is it takes me less than an hour and a half to knot. You're doing, I'm doing like maybe 40 knots a minute. Yes. If that, and I'm taking breaks, so it may take me you know, a little bit longer because I start and stop and start and stop. But if you do the math, you can literally in a minute, it's only going to take you maybe five or six seconds, if that, to do a knot once you get good with it. Mm -hmm. It yes. takes some time, but once you get good with it, you know, and that's the one thing is that it's carefree. Uh, I might wake up in the middle of the night or I might be in the shower and I might just grab my hair and decide to do a few knots. Yeah. And it becomes addictive. And before I know it, I'm searching all over. And I'm doing the <laughs> it's I'm true. Thinking, like, you know what time it is? You went up, you got up to go to the bathroom. What mm -hmm. are you doing in the middle of the night? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I kind of find it therapeutic in a way. It's, it is. It's it just... puts you in man. And I've said that since the beginning. And I don't know that people will understand that until they experience it. But it's a relaxing sort of thing. Like when you guard it, it you're is. so, it yeah, is. so that's one thing. It's amazing. And then the other thing is that I feel no discomfort whatsoever. My scalp is never sore. It feels yeah. like I don't have anything in my hair. Like right. I'm never cognizant of, like I used to be of a retightening. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of this is a relocking because the whole word tight has a constrictive energy to it. When I think mm -hmm. of retightening, why would I want to tighten my hair? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So true. So true. And none of the, like when I would get um, my hair retightened, my whole scalp would be red after I finished. Um, and so it's just, just not good. The signs were there, um, yeah. but I'm so grateful for Melissa. Oh, so grateful. So grateful. I am too. I am too. It's so interesting because I think historically within our community, we have gotten used to painful hair mm -hmm. experiences. Painful life experiences translate yes. over to painful hair experiences. So yes. it's nothing to, for a kid, when mom is beckoning them to come get their hair done, to kind of start to cry or not want to get it done, or the dad or any other authority figure in the in the environment to say, go easy, don't be so hard on her hair mm -hmm. or whatever. Th those are some of the things I remember growing up when my mom would do my hair, when my grandmother would do my hair, but we become accustomed to some sort of tension and strife and frustration and fear around hair. So by the time you take that sort of internalized trauma that has become acceptable and you sit down in the chair to have your hair relocked, it's nothing to get up and feel soreness. You think that's yes, normal. normal. A lot of people think it's normal until we start talking about it and we realize, no, sweetheart, it's not normal. These strands can only take so much. Just like the body can't take a beating, your hair can't take a beating, your scalp can't, your follicles can't. So if you're in irritation, redness, headaches. I've had women to tell me they cried when they went home for two weeks. They were taking uh, Advil or, or Tylenol. And I'm thinking, uh -huh. oh, like we're complaining about redness, but redness is a sign of distress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. Um, and it's, it's um, again, it, it takes me back to that heartbreaking phase that we're so harsh with ourselves and so punishing of ourselves, um, punishing our hair. Well, you keep punishing. Eventually, you're not left with any. And then it's just this never ending, horrible, horrible cycle to be in. So I'm, I'm glad to be out of it. I, know, me, I cannot tell you because when I started the channel, I started the channel from a place of just having fun. I was probably maybe seven years or so, seven and a half years into my journey. And 
very quickly, even, even earlier than that, though, I was having concerns. And so I was doing certain things in my hair care regimen. Like I would wash my own hair so no one had to detangle it. I would make sure that I you know, separated anything that was tangled. I would make sure that my hair had oil so that there wasn't a lot of friction. I would do a lot of things prior to going in for my retightening to make it an uneventful experience. I began to retighten all of the locks in certain parts of my head. I would I would suggest that people do some of those things, but you know, it's just it's just so amazing how we can be in a space of trying to compensate for something, you know, like a body part. If we hurt our knee, the other part of the body carries the load. So we begin to compensate for things to try to keep something that we know might not be working for us, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It needs to stop. And so I think that's why I think this is such a powerful thing to do because it teaches you to love your hair and to support your hair, which is mm -hmm. supporting you and actually changes the way that you perceive your life, the outlook on your life. Little things like that do make a difference. They make a huge um, difference. Yeah. And I, I, I will always say this, that I would never have been ready for Knotted Lock five years ago. It took me to get to a certain spiritual place in my life. Mm -hmm. In terms of embracing my feminine energy, in terms of wanting to mm -hmm. live a more flowing, harmonious, fluid life, mm -hmm. to have a certain way that I approach life. I was, when I uh, took on um, Sister Locks, I was um, very different. Uh, Sister Locks brought me into a wonderful space of a greater, more depthful degree of self-acceptance. But um, it got to a place where I knew that that was timing out because when I was doing the, the the channel and I began to really look at the process and then to hear some of what the other sisters were really dealing with and then to look at my own experience, I said, you know, this is an even bigger problem than I thought. Mm -hmm. So so many of the sisters were writing in with dreadful stories and sending me pictures of what their hair looked like before and what it looked like after some years of having this particular style. And then also many of them didn't have locticians who had said to them, I think something's going on with your hair. We might want to take a look at something that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sad. Sad. And so is that when you started um, your hair care, your hair care products, was it initiated from seeing those photos? Well, um, initially at year one and a half or two, I had made my own blend anyway. I've been in aromatherapy for some years. So I was using a particular blend anyway that I shared with the channel that was responsible, I felt, for my hair growth, the um, health of it, the uh, volume, and then its ability to be resilient because I was always dyeing my hair. I was always picking at my hair. I was always doing a lot of stuff with my hair. And this particular oil was something that I was asked to share on the channel or to sell, and I wasn't interested in selling it. So as I continued to do the channel and notice some of what was going on, I decided to offer it. And as I began to offer it, I realized it not only helped the sisters to, to gain more hair strength and hair integrity, many women were filling in bald spots with just the regular premium blend as, a, as an unintended consequence. And so that's when I took the time to develop the more therapeutic bl blend, the Magical Hair Growth Serum, which really is for that person that has had difficulty using other things and may not have had a lot of luck to really be able to focus in on one area and treat that area with a very powerful synergistic blend of all natural ingredients to help re-stimulate mm -hmm. and provide a better foundation for nutritive support for hair. But it came by way of the channel for sure, the Magical Hair Growth Serum, and then the share by request from uh, subscribers just like yourself and other people on the channel. I mm -hmm. see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. So um, one thing that I'll say, um, I've heard from a lot of people about the hesitation with knotted locks. How do I do it? And am I going to be able to um, keep it up? And I 
I would want you can at least get a consultation. I mean, <laughs> at least at least find out more. But um, for me, I'll say even for me, I'm coming from a place, a person who is not good at doing hair. I have no talent at all. And even when I was sitting there with Melissa, she was watching me and she'd say, what, what are you doing? <laughs> I was doing I something funky. I, heard I was like really up in my head. <laughs> she said, I, I don't know if you're doing it backwards. I don't know. And so, but she said, I'm just going to let you go and do it your own way because apparently I have a special way of doing it. But the thing is, it, it becomes intuitive. And I would encourage people to at least check it out. It's for the health of your hair, for the vit vitality of your hair. And if you like sister locks and want to, keep that that type of look it's it's worth investigating it's definitely worth investigating i agree wholeheartedly when i look at locks that have maybe eight this one probably has one two three four i can hardly feel the difference now with the first one i did it's already connected into the sister lock the one that like this is my full sister lock so i have a knot here I can't really feel it, but I know there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is a lock with eight. When you get mm -hmm. to this part that's more embedded, you can't see any different. No. Up here, you can barely see any different. Um, and so I know that as these embed, they're going to be thicker and healthier, and they're going to look very similar to this because with I don't know everybody's sister locks develop differently but I can't see the interlocking in my lock my hair has always no. been very fuzzy and so when I mm -hmm. look at this I'm like it looks the same but to be honest I was never concerned about the look when I made the choice I said I don't care what it looks like I'm a free spirit I'm free flowing in my yeah. life <laughs> I, I could care less as long as my hair is healthy and it's problem free and worry free. Mm -hmm. I don't yes. care what it looks like at this point. If I had to braid three strands together and do traditional locks, I would have been ready to do that. So this mm -hmm. to me was an easy transition, but I notice I, I notice a lot of people are concerned about the look of it. And like you, I can't I say, you know, the health to me is is the most important thing. But as far as the look, I can't tell much. All I know is my yeah. face, because they're knots, they sit up on top of each other like this. So the hair stands up, you have more volume. And then I'm also noticing lots of stray hairs now growing in, in the parted areas, in the grids. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing that? You will I notice just it. started to notice that in some areas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that coupled with some other things that I'm doing, I just know, and I'm getting a sense. And I'm not sure because I noticed different things with different parts of my hair based upon the texture. Some of the locks that are thinner and in areas of my hair where the the um the the the, the texture is different, they embed faster and they're tighter. Mm -hmm. And then in smaller areas like up in here, they bounce around a bit and they're real spongy and it takes them a little bit longer to embed. So um, it's very interesting as I kind of get a sense of really, like you said, I become more uh, attuned to my hair and what my hair needs and how my hair feels in different parts of mm -hmm. my head. So I become more intimate with my hair, meaning I become more intimate with myself. <laughs> exactly. Now, all I yes. do is worry about putting the oil in, taking care of my hair, and whenever I decide to not. And that's it. Like, I just don't think about it the way I used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was at the point where I said, you know, um, even like, like you said, even if it doesn't look, I, I didn't know what it was going to look like, but even if it doesn't look great, that's, it's going to look a whole lot better than bald. Right. And so <laughs> I was going to cut them out. Um, once I started seeing that, I said, wow. well, yeah, I was like, um, there's going to be a solution or I'm cutting these out, but my hair is, not, I'm not going bald over this. Because and I so, yeah, that night I went to sleep and I said, hey, I need an answer. 
um, to, to what's going on here. And the next morning I woke up and your video was like the first one um, speaking about not at locks. So I was like, Oh, <laughs> well, maybe this is not at locks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was just such a smooth transition. It's it interesting. Really it's like, you know how we hear, um, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? Yes. Right yes. before I met Melissa, I was going through this space. You know, I'm filling these orders. People are telling me the Magical Hair Growth Serum and the products are really helping them. But I'm still hearing from other people and realizing there's a huge community of people whose heads are in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I, th that's something that I take to heart. And I was washing my car that day. And my back was to my phone and she showed up on my timeline and I heard her voice. And I said, it was like, it was like fate. Like you said a prayer yeah. that night and I showed up on your timeline. Same thing. I remember carrying that prayer in my heart. He showed up on my timeline and immediately that same day I made a decision. I already knew this was the solution that I was waiting for. Yep, me too. Immediately, <laughs> I listened to all of our... Um, yeah, and that's what I tell people. Yeah. Like, you know, you know. And if you don't, that's okay. Just take your time. Mm -hmm. Take your time. When the time is right, you'll transition and you won't have concerns about how your hair is going to look. You'll be concerned about the health of your hair. Yes, yes, yes. So it's wonderful. Such a wonderful experience. And I just hope that... <laughs> This is able to grow um, because the benefits, it, again, it's not about hair. You become not, you're just not concerned about it. It is, um, you become, like you said, you just, you're intimate with yourself. You're, everything is fully integrated. It's holistic. It's just a beautiful experience. Um, once you take care of, take care of this to where it's not an issue anymore. It's not something that you hate. It's not something that you're fighting against. That's what it is. I'm not fighting against my hair anymore. I'm working with the natural evolution of my hair. Oh my gosh. And you know, yeah. I still, when I really embraced it, I started saying, you know, Sister Locks brought tremendous value to my life. I said, but when I think back to where I was then and where I am now, Sister Locks is rigorous. It's dogmatic. Mm -hmm. It sets mm -hmm. up resistance. It's a more masculine energy. Militant. Yeah. It's militant. And then you feel oppressed. And then your mm -hmm. hair is oppressed. So yes. when you transition over to not at locks, you feel freedom. You feel feminine. You feel creative. You feel as though you're in the void and you're discovering all that is feminine that lacks resistance and that gives life to life is what you feel with not at locks. It felt like a natural transition for me. Yes. Yes. And I want that for so many people, <clears throat> just that freedom, you know? So. When you embrace this and then you get comfortable with the nodding, like even when I look at how I used to nod in the beginning versus the way I'm nodding now, it's become even more euphoric of an experience because now I get that little rascal and I can slide it right in place. And it sits down beside its other family members at the kitchen table to have dinner. And it's just wonderful. It's so easy. And now I'm able to work out some of the kinks that had me making mistakes in the beginning because I was resisting and I was pushing too hard, you mm -hmm. know? So as you go through the journey, Yolanda, you're going to start to become even better with the nodding and it's going to become even more seamless and you'll be able to tell the difference if you're not sometimes the same way you were able to tell maybe when you switched locticians <laughs> yes yes yeah um there are a lot of errors in here but that's okay <laughs> i've learned to embrace that as well and you learn to embrace that as well and then i've learned little hacks and things so mm -hmm. we definitely have to get in the support group and I've got to share more about some of those little hacks that I'm learning along the way. But it it's just freeing. And I'm so happy that you want to share your experience with other people. And I'm so happy that you were able to come on today to highlight some very critical things that for some people, when I say these things, it upsets them. You can be in denial and not really realize it. And mm -hmm. you can be at four or five years in your journey and not see it 
per se, even though the hair loss is happening at a micro level, that doesn't mean that by year seven or eight or nine that you're going to have a head of hair or that you're going to be in the same place you were when you started out. Yes. Yes. So true. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm grateful to you. Are, are there any last words you want to share with anyone that may be listening, Yolanda? Um, I would say um, consider the choices that you're making um, with your hair, with your life. Um, don't think about just the here and now but think about how it's affecting you holistically and think about how it's going to affect you in the future. Um, And do know that if you are experiencing some loss um, due to tension, it's probably not going to get better over time. So definitely take that into consideration. Um, Knotted locks may not be for you. You may be perfectly fine with sister locks and your hair may be flourishing with sister locks. And if it is, I'm I'm glad and I hope that that continues. But if not, definitely consider making a change. Um, At least look into it for your health, um, for the for the future. Think about the future. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And if someone goes to knot at locks and they don't like it, they can always go back to interlocking. Yes. You can go yes, right back. Can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And you can you can cut it off. I mean it's not none of this is none of this is permanent. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. So yes. consider your options. Yeah, you have the power to make choices that benefit you. That's right. Yolanda, thank you for coming on to the channel today. I really appreciate you, and I know that there are going to be a lot of sisters out there who are going to gain a lot from your sharing today, and I just think it's invaluable, and I'm I'm forever and eternally grateful to you taking the time out of your schedule today to, to share some of your experiences with us. Oh, thrilled to do it. Thank you so much for having me. You are most welcome. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Hey ladies, do you love the way your skin looks and feels? I know I do because I am using the I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. And at 50, I love the way my skin looks and feels. This blend is bomb. It renews, revitalizes, rejuvenates, soothes, conditions, moisturizes, tones, brightens, and fades all in one step. So if you're ready to get your glow on, go get you some I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. If you struggle with acne during your youth or even as an adult, it's time to give I Am Melanin Magic Acne Serum a try. Unlike other harsh products that dry your skin, our oils balance and purify, helping to heal inflammation. All natural and formulated to meet the requirements of melanated skin. You'll see results in no time. Don't delay. Order yours today. Do you have dark spots from skin irritation? How about unsightly marks from acne that's lasted way too long? Fade Magic can help you find your way back to radiance over time. Don't delay, order yours today. If you are not using Melanin Magic hair oil, then what are you using? Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic skin and hair care brand. The I Am Melanin Magic hair oil is our premium product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage and promotes growth and can be used on all hair types and looks from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and it's antifung, so you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic since February of this year, and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. 
This is really all your hair needs. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. It's amazing. The product speaks for itself. Order yours today and don't delay. Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you.